I thought he was dead. Holmes, what happened? I feel deathly. He's turning into a man. Won't you look it? <laughs> Let me examine you. Please don't tell me that you've returned to your old habits. Okay. All right. Before we do that, <laughs> oh, he's really pale and like slightly blue. That's probably not a good thing. Hello everybody, I'm Crazy Ko, and welcome to Crimes and Punishment Sherlock Holmes. Apparently he's dying. Now last episode we finished off our investigation of the train, we got it wrong, but eh, that's life. Only somewhat wrong. Only somewhat wrong. <laughs> we just forgot a few clues that made our investigations inconclusive. Um, to the conclusions that we went to. But we're now in another case. Looks like Holmes is dying. The pupil is dilated. His pupils are dilated. He's got ears. Um, oh yeah. Hello? He's got a mouth, nose. Oh, here we the go. The temperature appears to be normal. He's got a normal temperature. Oh. I need to concentrate and count the heartbeats. Oh dear. Measure pulse rate by counting the heartbeats for 10 seconds. Okay. I need to concentrate One. and count the heartbeats. You have to actually count them. <laughs> I, I, how do I count them? One, two, three. Apparently you have to click. Well, the game doesn't know that you just said numbers out loud. <laughs> True. A weak pulse. Around 50 beats per minute. If you did eight in 10 seconds. Yes. Be but you're dying, yeah, Holmes. Okay. Your pulse rate is dropping. We need to get you to the hospital <laughs> immediately. Holmes is the dying. antidote. <laughs> Give it to me. The antidote? You mean that you're poisoned? Probably no. poisoned himself. <laughs> Knowing him. Here, drink it all. Don't tell me that you did this to yourself. I mean, are you that surprised, Hemlock Watson? And the Tura. I was compelled to. Holmes, <laughs> imagine if I'd not returned home when I did. What might have happened? <laughs> I knew that you would. <laughs> but if he got delayed? Mr. Holmes, Inspector Lestrade is here to see you. Mr. Holmes is unable to see anyone at the moment. He is unwell. He's Good fine. day, Inspector. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mr. Holmes, I'm glad you're fine. The case, your case makes him this feel better every time. One. We have brought in two young bankers from the city, sons of lords, members of the chamber, and so on and so forth. They were found stranded in a rowing boat that was drifting on the Thames. Cool. A romantic escapade with an unhappy ending, Lestrade. I'm glad he recovers what? from poisoning so well, fast. Yes, they were both in the bath, but uh, what? As I said. And they were tied together. You are lacking in imagination, <laughs> Inspector. Well, no, I'm not. Anyway. There was a banner flapping about in the boat with the RMS Oceanic printed on it and signed by the Merry Men. The Oceanic? Isn't that the largest steamer ever built? Yes. And these two young banker chaps are sons of the owners of the White Star Line, the company that built it. There are rumors of corruption. I'm not interested in politics, Lestrade. I'll keep it then. Here's another one that's a bit more complex and maybe to your liking. It's a murder, but we're unable to find any weapon. Uh, so they're probably we haven't linked. touched anything. It's at the Roman Baths in Strand Lane. A murder, a vanishing weapon, the Roman Baths. That's for us. Watson, fetch your hat. <laughs> Seems like he was dying. How is he fine? He's magical. <laughs> okay. I have things. What? Things. I do have things. Let's see. Go to the baths. Aha! That was the first one. Do I have something with this one? Aha! Yeah, you missed one clue. <laughs> yep, I missed that one clue with the wheels. Hey, look! I now have a train whistle. It'll be fun. And you should have a letter on your. Here? Sideboard. No. On your sideboard. On my sideboard. Fireplace. Okay. Fireplace. Fireplace. This Letters. This is where I keep my oh, post. Oh, you can get one. 
I don't have a letter. Maybe because I got it wrong? No, but even wrong, get, you just get different letters. Talk to Toby. Toby! Why are you on, on my chair? On the sofa for the third time today. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. <laughs> Watson! <laughs> How dare you sit on Toby! Hi, Toby! He's so cute. I wish we took Toby with us more places. <laughs> Watson, we should take Toby with us from now on. Every investigation. All right, let's go to these baths. I don't have any brain goo, so I can't do brain goo yet. I like how his book here matches our book. That's a fun little... Sometimes. Sometimes, Sometimes. it's just a novel he's reading. True. But it's a fun little nod. The game is self-aware. Ooh, dramatic music. It's a freaky looking fish. What a beautiful place. With a dreadful murder. The body of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe is still in the steam room. It has not been touched, per your usual instructions, Mr. Holmes. I shall be waiting for you here, but please hurry. Cool. Are you able to identify the men who are with the victim in the steam room? Yes. The manager of the bath, Sir Gregory Pitkin, a lad from the city council, Garrow, and an archaeologist by the name of Blinkhorn. Blinkhorn. I think the plump one, Garrow, did it. He doesn't seem right in the head. Well, we shall see. All right. Was there anyone else here, apart from those gentlemen in the steam room? Yes, a Mr. Phillips. He was the one who called the police. He will be able to give you more details. Cool. You found no murder weapon? No, and that's why I called you. All three witnesses and the victim were locked in when the murder occurred, and they remained so until we got here. We even had to pick the lock to enter. I see. I see. All right, thank you, Mr. Those are creepy fish. They're like platypus fish. They have bills. Okay, where is the... There he is. Okay, he's sitting down now. Where'd he go? He was standing up before. Mr. Phillips. Good day to you, Mr. Phillips. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Would you be so kind as to answer Oh, I didn't questions? get to dress for this. Certainly, She went to my room and changed my outfit. Yeah. Missed opportunity. All right. Let's see. He's got eyes. He's got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look, he has a jawbone. Yes, got that. All right, he's got buttons. Everyone has buttons. We must always note their buttons. Manchester City. Do, do, do. Ah. Please tell us the chain of events from the start of your day. Everything that you can remember. The slightest detail may be of importance. Very well, sir. I came in at 6.30 this morning and I opened the baths. I made sure that the room was clean, and I prepared the towels. The brazier was still burning. There was a fire burning all night? Yes, Sir Gregory ordered me to light the brazier yesterday. It takes some time until the room is fully heated. The gentleman had a meeting at nine o'clock this morning. I wanted everything to be perfect. They'd been in the steam room for 20 minutes when I suddenly heard shouting. I ran to the door, but it was closed. I couldn't open it, so I ran out to the street to call for the police. One constable came up, and then there were others, and they picked the lock. Then Inspector Lestrade came along, and he told us that nothing should be touched. Hmm. Did you receive any other visitors this morning? No one. Until these gentlemen arrived, Sir Gregory was the first. And then, while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived, and Mr. Garrow followed. What happened after that? I waited until they'd all entered the steam room, then I returned to the hall. The changing room door was open, so I should hear if they needed anything. You would have heard if someone had entered or left the steam room? 
Certainly, sir. These doors make a lot of noise. Mm. Well, Are the steam rooms on the other side, Mr. Holmes? Okay. Fridge... Fridge... Frigidarium? Is Are the steam cold? rooms on the other side, Mr. Holmes? I want to go in the cold room. <laughs> Why isn't there a statue in this one? I didn't want one. Why? What? What? Or oh, that one? That one doesn't have one either. Okay, what's this one? Don't worry. Let's just Exodus. Exodus. Okay, that's probably the exit. I like the floor. Look at that. The detail. It's I know, it's good. Uh, Apoditarium and Sudatorium. You can see my Latin is perfect. These clothes belong to one of the suspects from the steam room. Cool. Clothes belonging to one of the suspects. Yeah, they did a really good job of recreating like Roman mosaics and wall frescoes and stuff. Although I don't know... Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Cool. Champagne! Oh. Champagne? For a special occasion. Mm. An ice. ice bucket to keep the champagne chilled. It's gonna be one of those things where they're killed with ice because it melts because he was in a steam room. Unopened. It was intended to be enjoyed after the steam session. Okay. So they were obviously doing something that they were gonna celebrate afterwards. Okay. Expensive clothes belonging to one of the men from the steam room. Towels, don't care about those either. All right, let's go in. Wow, ooh, I like that floor. Door warning. Door warning. Oh, door warning. Oh yes. I'm really bad at those. I'm Good sorry. Lord Holmes. <laughs> ah, death with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. Hey, let us forget about that. Alrighty, so gore warning. <laughs> there was only one hit from the weapon. It pierced the right eye straight through to the brain. Death would have been instantaneous. Fun. Hmm. The wound should not have bled so profusely. This pool is rather large. See, so that makes me also think ice, because then you have extra liquid. Look, Watson. He was wearing a ring. He very likely yeah, removed it before the steam, steam session. The steam yeah, or that. <laughs> you just don't want me to admit that I've solved the case already. I'm just pretty sure it's not the answer, because it's the most obvious answer. <laughs> True. <laughs> never know. Alright, I think I got everything? I don't know. No. No, I didn't. What... What else do I have? Well, let me examine his feet. Instead, I'm done with his face. Oh, I got something else on his hand. Some dirt or earth. I'll take a sample. Okay. Are we good then? Oh, Death is missed. very recent. Between 30 minutes to one hour ago. All right, there you go. I think we have found all that we can here, taking into consideration the abysmal lighting. Constable, we have finished with the body. We don't have many leads here. What concerns me is that we still have to find the murder weapon. Mr. Holmes? Please have the body removed without <laughs> Look how you just left the other dudes in, in here. <laughs> all right, Mr. Holmes. Nice. I was wondering, Holmes, it's fairly so. reckless to carry out a murder inside a closed chamber. Why do you suppose they did it? There are a great many possibilities. It's the murderer practice. was in a hurry. Or he is an artist. Or a ghost. Or he wanted to ensure that I'd be brought in on the case. <laughs> Probably the latter. You are ridiculous. Do you know that? Yeah, I tried to poison myself this morning. I'm very ridiculous. Steam 
Steam switch. Ooh, I made it very steamy. With the steam on, I'm unable to see even a few feet away. And thus all the suspects run away. Yeah, I already looked at that, right? Oh, it's just that I couldn't see it. Alright, so that's how they disguised it. Probably. Glasses. One lens is cracked, probably due to the temperature of the brazier. Probably. These lenses are for myopia. The wearer is short-sighted. Cool. The brazier is still burning. The heat here is extreme. Ooh. I will need something to pick up this melted metal. Cool. It is too hot. I cannot reach into it. Well, at least we know he doesn't have superhuman pick up melted metal abilities. Okay. Uh, who do we want to talk to? Let's it's talk horrible. To so Rodney is dead. Can't we speak about it somewhere else? No. I'm in shock. I don't want to talk. It's horrible. I can't talk at the moment. Okay. So why are they still here? Mr. Holmes? The grid cannot be removed. The weapon is nowhere to be found. Okay, I need something to... Two tongs. Two tongs. Ooh, no. I should check this blood sample at Baker Street. What is that? It's a thing in the blood, but it won't let me look at it. Oh, right This key know. was covered in blood. <laughs> I should ask Phillips about it. Bloody key. Okay, let's go find some tongs and talk to Phillips. Watson? No. Yeah. Watson's <laughs> not coming with us. Hi, Lestrade. I need to talk to this dude. Maybe I don't want to talk to Lestrade. How many people have keys to the steam room? We have just the one key for now, which Sir Gregory gave to me. So, this morning you opened the steam room, and then? I put the key inside my desk. But when they called, I couldn't find it. It had disappeared. I, I, I don't know where it is. Did you leave the baths at any time, or receive any visitors? No, sir. I did not. You are not telling the truth, <laughs> Mr. Phillips. You left your work this morning, and you went to the post office, where you dispatched a telegram at around 7.30. But how could you... No! I... The telegram was for someone in Manchester. Mr. Holmes, it's imp... I'll tell you everything. <laughs> I left the baths at 7.20. My sister wrote to me yesterday, and she needed a reply, or our mother is unwell. I was away for 20 minutes, and I closed the baths on my way out. Did you receive a reply from your sister? No, she wasn't meant to. I just told her to pawn my old school uniform so that she could pay for the medication. Did you check to see if the key was still in your desk when you returned? No, I didn't. Please, Mr. Holmes, don't tell the police about this. Sir Gregory would give me the sack. I need this job. I see. <laughs> there is a bottle of champagne on ice in the changing room. Do you have any idea who left it there? There is? Are you quite certain? I didn't pay any attention. Do you believe that it's important? Maybe. Uh, Lestrade Lou, I need some tong things. Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? Mm -hmm. They're not going to talk to you here. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. None, Lestrade. Uh, okay. Anybody seen any tongs? 
This area serves as Sir Rodney Bentcliffe's workshop. Cool. I didn't know I could go this way, but we're going this way. Alright, anything useful? Useful? No, maybe? No? Does have numbers on them? No, nothing. Oh, hello. Photo negatives. Glass plate negatives. A remarkable method for recording ancient civilizations. Glass plate negatives. Yeah, yeah, okay, can we open it? A glass plate negative is missing. Cool. Ooh. It is a glass plate negative of an Egyptian statue. Cool. Mummies! It was a mummy. Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. She's allowed to just keep these here. Okay. Can we go this way? There we go. Okay. Don't care about that. Alright. Daily Mirror. There are a few among us who could claim any degree of unfamiliarity with the name of Sir Robert Bentcliffe. He is a gentleman who possesses the wealthy notoriety and figure to well match the finest of his ilk about in England. His intellect is equal to his charms, as he has oft been declared by the young ladies of the European aristocracy. He holds powerful connections within the Lord's Chamber and carries an influence inside the political world. There are those who would call him unforgiving, authoritarian, but we should rather say that Rodney is determined and ambitious. His presence at any archaeological site can only mean success for all concerned. Interesting. Alright, dear friend, I wish to organize a press conference at the Strand Lane Baths next month. 1893 was a remarkable year for my work in Egypt, but now it is time to set my focus upon English archaeology. Shine the light on our national treasures and reveal them to the public. I would like to see as many journalists as possible in attendance to record this event and record it favorably if we treat them well enough. I should like to recall my old friendship with Lord Blackmore and use the special funds of the Royal Archaeological Institute for this event. So Rodney but isn't Blackmore the one we talked to in one of the other games? Or is that something else? Okay. We did else. talk to the guy that, uh, train guy was considering as an investor, but you didn't come back from that. Oh. The Times, miraculous reopening for the Strand Lane Roman Baths, excavation research. The research efforts were about to be halted when a savior arrived in the form of Sir Rodney Bentley. Sir Rodney has taken over immediate control of the excavation, claiming that the site holds the key to a great mystery. We pledge to update our readers with all the exciting news as it develops. Cool. More documents. This metal plate, besides its archaeological interest, appears to be part of something larger. At the present moment, I am unable to determine exactly what that might be. It's like the lid of something or something. That's cool. a shape has been cut in the plate. What should be done with it? Oh, I'm just gonna take that. Okay. Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. Aha! I will need there we these go. tongs. Finally. <laughs> Tools used by archaeologists in their research. Okay. Cool. We got our tongs. What's down here? I wonder how this could have happened. <laughs> yes, it is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the Frigidarium. The coal room. 
barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I really wanted to go that way. Those stones weigh tons. We won't move them. It does not matter. If our investigation requires it, we shall ask for them to be removed. Well, if you look up, you can see all the little holes in there. Not bad. Go back. Big sky. Yeah, I know. The sky. The plants. Man, I wanted to go that way. Do Yeah, they really need to fix their roof. Imagine it leaks something awful when it rains. Okay, I have my tongs. So let's go back in here. Boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, ba doo. Hi -ya! Oh. Oh. Uh, what? 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 Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this? Okay, we have fully examined the crime scene. Um, let's go home and do science. <laughs> science. Do you have any brain goo yet? We do. Not useful brain goo yet. Okie dokie. Hi, Toby. On the sofa for the third time today. No, that's actually well, the fourth time. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. Watson, don't sit on Toby. Okay, so we've got we've got a dirt sample, we've got some other things to do, but let's start with this. Yes? Oh, set focus. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Selenite. Selenite. Pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. Cool. White clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now, I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. White clay. The sample of dirt belongs to the White London Clay region, located near the city of St. Albans. Interesting. All right, more science. Let us analyze really this blood science. sample. Oh, I like this. What focus are. This blood has not coagulated well. It seems very liquid. That is strange. Let us see what is inside it. Hydrogen peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. Yes, I must take science. a pipette and place oh, several okay. drops of hydrogen peroxide. Oh, look at my fancy pipette. Look at this. Ooh. Ooh, science. 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 Sci science. Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. Ah, my ice theory is becoming more and more relevant. So is the steam theory, yes. <laughs> this is a piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but I need to be sure. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of a reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. Alrighty. I bet. Acid. Don't know what kind of acid. Just acid. Okay. You. Uh -huh. The reaction is the same red stain. It is silver. Britannia silver quality. Interesting. My analysis table. Okay. It is useful That's all the science work. we get to do for now. 
It's quite a bit of science. Kind of boring science, but not bad. At least it was like legit science this time. Not like, <laughs> mix these random colors to see what colors show up. We're becoming more science-y as time A map goes of by. London and the surrounding area. It could be useful. <gasps> okay, let's go to Scotland Yard and talk to some dudes. Ooh, do I have any brain food? Ooh. Yeah. What if we just sit in here? Do they do anything? No? Okay. <laughs> Hello! Hello! Good morning, constables! What's it? I'm trying to say? Good morning! Hey! It's you! No, you got no. the country. <laughs> it's not quite you. Your face is the tiniest bit different, but it could almost Good day to you, Mr. Holmes. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Holmes. Good morning. Secondary gore warning. Secondary gore warning? Secondary gore warning. Okay. Secondary gore warning. When Garrow found Sir Rodney dead, he wiped the blood upon himself. What? Drug. A file with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wart flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. Interesting. Okay. An embroidered silk handkerchief. A fountain pen with solid gold trim. Fancy. Sir Gregory Pitkin's visiting card. This ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. I see the join. This ring was repaired and quite badly too with silver. An Egyptian symbol. It is a very old jewel. Why on earth would they wear such a ring? A very pertinent question. Oh, likes old rings. An old and rather dirty coin. Oh, we're just taking that. A hand-drawn okay. map. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn that. Okay. The start doesn't need any of his evidence, Rodney does he? Rodney <laughs> Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. The last pages were torn out. We must find a way of retrieving Sir Rodney's last lines. Watson, please prevent anyone from entering the room. But first, fetch me a pencil. Because I'm incapable of doing so. <laughs> to begin with, a few strokes of the pencil will be enough. I don't want to damage the traces. Strokes of pencil, it means, it means a lot. The whole oh, area. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a few strokes. No, we need all by, the like, strokes. Three lines, and then I waited for something to happen. <laughs> good work, Frogways. It's good to see you're still taking care of your players. Not misleading them in any way. Yeah, it doesn't mean a few strokes. <laughs> Today, I almost. For the something will down in history. Is this enough pencil? Today I almost found it. This date will go down in. Okay, it's enough. Okay. And then to gently smudge the leftover pencil marks with a handkerchief. I'm sure that Watson <laughs> won't mind if I use his. La la la, Watson. <laughs> 
You didn't want a clean handkerchief, did you? Mr. Holmes, the coroner had... But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final Ooh, word. The, the rest of it is lost. <laughs> Perhaps Secondary the autopsy door warning. will assist us in that matter. Because knowing sure how autopsy has been up to now, now and then this game, I we're going to have sure some autopsies. Must, Constable. No. Oh, okay. Subject to Rodney Bentcliffe, age 63. Right eyeball has been burst, pierced to the hilt by a curved bladed knife. Uh, blade cut through the orbit of the frontal bone, ripping a part of the frontal lobe and the corpus callosum. I don't know what that is. Brain after parts. rich. What? Brain parts. Okay. Completing its trajectory into the cerebellum caused a hemorrhagic. Ugh, hemorrhagic lesions. Nice. All of these injuries were led directly to the death of the individual. At the upper lobe of the right lung, there is an old injury filled with an amount of mucus and cellulated debris that may correspond to a chronic infection by elements likely inhaled in a burial chamber, a decaying mummy, for example, or a dried and decomposing food product intended to accompany the deceased in their grave. Wow, you're making a lot of insinuations there, buddy. <laughs> Remainder of the body does not appear to have been damaged. All right. Cool. Let's go to an autopsy. Yes, I did. I did. I did that one, didn't I? Oh, I'm sorry. An ordinary pencil. Sir Gray Pitkin, manager to Mr. Blinkhorn. Dear sir, the interests that I represent require the situation at the baths to be changed for the better. At the present time, the Frigidarium excavation remains under your direction, and yet the works have not progressed. You have failed to find anything of value, and we are... Ooh. Ooh, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. Unable to make the Frigidarium accessible to the public. Frigidarium is a vital asset in the recreation of the Roman bath experience. I urge you to complete your work within the next two months. You have been remaining time to conclude your archaeological research and to find yourself, or to find yourself, and to find yourself another workplace. I don't know, reading's hard today, apparently. <laughs> eh? Whoa! That was something. Sometimes these control holes are a little bit janky. Let's go to the morgue. Ooh, hello. According to the coroner, there were no cardiac problems nor lung congestion, but there were traces of fungus. Possibly fungus. contracted from the Egyptian tombs. I say fungus, you just said debris. The coroner observed no stomach nor liver disease, if we're to accept that Sir Rodney was an occasional drinker and 63 years of age. Cool. Cool. Ooh. Oh. I'm sorry, but warning! <laughs> Some light bruising caused by a rope. The bruising is in lines. They were caused by a rope around the waist. Sir Rodney was descending somewhere. Probably in the Frigidarium. Hello? An unusual wound, inflicted by a curved knife, which resulted in instant death, as the coroner's report says. Oh, that was boring. It wasn't as exciting. It's kind of weird that I rolled him around, but you know. That's life. Rolling around. Ooh, saws. That would have been more exciting. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I get to choose? Or some. Nope, there's no one in there. Alright. Watch the tail. Good day to you, Mr. Holmes. Good day. Let's talk to. Ah, you're Please right here. escort this suspect for interrogation. This is not quite not quite Sean Connery. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Uh, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my name is Percival Blinkhorn. Doesn't sound like Sean Connery at all. What is your occupation? 
I'm an archaeologist specializing in the Roman period. I'm working Maybe on like several excavation sites escaped. at present, including the baths of Strand there. Lane. Hmm. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you tell me more about the baths? <laughs> well, we're hoping to retrieve a great many interesting artifacts from the site and to list any items of value before their eventual restoration and exhibition. And has it been successful? It has, thanks to Sir Rodney. Cool. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney? Well, I couldn't say that he was a kind man, no. Uh, but he was talented. I felt a great admiration for him, I, I must say. Was it your first collaboration? I had met Sir Rodney briefly once in Egypt, and I'd shared my researches with him. Surprisingly, my work did convince him to come here. He arrived only a couple of months ago. Surprisingly? Well, Sir Rodney is, uh, was, uh, God, a cold man, and so very secretive, too. But I learned so much from him. I can't believe that he's dead. Alright, well, before we do any more, we should profile him, in case he gets us anything relevant. He has eyes, too! Focused. It's creepy, his eyes are moving. Okay, he has a beard, but apparently we don't care. Okay, we didn't get to see- oh, there we go, they're down there more. Ah, I see. Tentative, not wealthy, and can you tell me what you event. saw today? Well, we entered the steam room and we all went to sit down. Uh, the steam was particularly dense, and I didn't see anything much further after that. I just heard Mr. Garrow shouting, but we all ran for the door and bumped into each other. I was very alarmed by this point. What did you do? Well, the door was stuck. And with all the steam, it was quite frightening. I was barely able to see my own feet. Garrow was covered in blood. Do you believe that Garrow killed Sir Rodney? Oh, no. Garrow couldn't harm a fly. Unless he was hallucinating. Can you recall any recent event that would occur to you now as being a little strange? Well, yesterday we had a small argument. Is that all? No. Sir Rodney informed me that he was to attend the London Archaeological Congress with me. Then he advised me of quite the opposite. And rather aggressively, too. Do you recognize this ring? Uh, certainly. It's the famous Aswan ring. Sir Rodney brought it back from his last campaign in Egypt. And he kept it for himself? Sir Rodney has... Uh, had his own particular ideas of archaeology. What can you tell me about Garrow? Well, he always looks so sad. And um, he has been acting strangely lately. He complains about voices and visions. So I will take keep an eye on him because I'm worried. How well were your researchers progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather well. No, they weren't. This letter reveals that Sir Gregory was prepared to put a stop to your work. Uh, yes. But since Sir Rodney's arrival, he had calmed down. He allowed us to work. Uh, I'm not sure what they agreed on. Hmm. What will happen now that Sir Rodney is dead? Well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but if it's needed, I will fight to defend Sir Rodney's expectations. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? No. Silver, you say? No, I don't know how it got there. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? No, I did not. No, the answer to everything is no. I'm perfectly interested. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Interrogation. A good day to you. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Ah, uh, 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 I am Tristram Garrow. Alright, 
let's do his first time. He has eyes. Ears. Hair. Nose. No buttons. Buttons. Hands. Buttons. No, we don't get to look at his hands. Nope. Oh, hello. Yeah, we know that. What about he's got dirt there too, but I guess we already commented on dirt. He's not missing any buttons. Uh he's got a pocket. Yeah, I know that, I know that. Dirty clothes. He has a nose. He has a nose. I don't, what else does it want? He has ears. He has hair. Collar. Is that something? No. Okay. Tie. Hello. A belt. Pocket. Pants. What does it want from me? What does it want? He broke his forehead. But there's nothing here. You went too far. Oh, is it not going to? What's oh, there? oh, yep. there we go. <laughs> what? Perspiration. Oh, I see. I thought those were just like scars on his face. What is wow, your occupation? I, I am a councillor at the uh, district chamber. And what were you doing at the baths? Well, I I follow the researchers. I am uh, I interested in, in archaeology. You follow them? Yes. So many things happened and w we need to know. Or perhaps it's better hidden. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garrow. I, uh, I, I meant nothing but by that. I, I apologize. <laughs> what was it like to work with Sir Rodney? It was like uh, working w with a genius. He was a hard man, but then, you, you know, this world is hard. There are always people who want to steal from you. And he, uh, he, he trusted me, but, uh, oh. Are you feeling unwell? Oh, I'm sorry. He is I. I remember. Oh, I... I feel so sorry. Do you need anything? I, uh, I, I, I feel bad. I, uh, I, I hear... No, nothing. I, 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 I'm better now. <laughs> Please try to recall what you saw today. The room was so, so hot, I, I had to remove my glasses. I was not feeling so very well in, in there. But you found the body. I saw the knife, you know. Flying through the air, I, I, I saw the blood. I tried to escape, I, I don't remember. Saw the knife? What did it look like? Everything was as if in a nightmare. It all happened so fast. The knife was shining like, like gold. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Well, he, he had been rather secretive these past few days. Last Thursday, for, for example, I, I saw him leave. When he returned, it, it was very late. He showed me some wet coins, Roman coins, and uh, he, he started to laugh. His ring! Oh, it should be destroyed. Why do you say that? It is a cursed ring, digging dark secrets. Really? I... Uh, it is after me now. I know it. Oh, I shouldn't have worked on it in the workshop. It's too late now. Interesting. This is the coin that, that he showed me. It is from the third century. It must be very rare. No, I, 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 I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. This will help me to calm down. Do be careful with the dosage. 
I, I will. I mean it. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? It didn't help. The power is too strong. So then they melt a bunch Did you of place the bottle of champagne in Me? the changing room? What? No. Garrow appears to be <laughs> rather mentally disturbed. <laughs> Either that or he is a good actor. Interesting. Please escort this suspect. All right, we'll do this last interrogation, interrogation. and then that will probably be it for this episode. Good day to you, Sir Gregory. My name is Sherlock Holmes. He looks fancy. I'm assisting the police with their investigation He's of the murder sir. that took place this morning. Would you mind answering a few questions? Tell me, Mr. Holmes, will I need to stay here for very much longer? You are the manager of the baths, is that correct? Yes. I'm passionate about archaeology. I wanted to restore the ruins. My ambition is to open the baths to the public. Living archaeology can be a profitable business, although now I'm not so sure. I see. When do you wish to begin using the baths? When the archaeological researches are over, I will be free to complete the restoration. It is the usual process. Alright, let's look at you. He two has eyes, but we don't care about those. He has a mouth. Oh, oh. We care about his mouth. Not his eyes. Secret ring. Gold chain. Yeah, he's a fancy dude. Look at that. Fancy. Fancy man. Fancy, fancy man. Fancy man. Fancy man. You have ears. Oh, we do care about your eyes. Okay. <laughs> what was your relationship with Sir Rodney Bentcliffe? We were not particularly close. He had an unpleasant temperament. Suspicious. Authoritarian. Unkind. People possessed by genius may be forgiven for their nature, but not by me. Was he obstructive? Not at all. Everything he did led us to greater success. He helped us increase the potential of the building. Please tell me what happened this morning. The test that we performed this morning was a success. The steam was working well. But then, of course, that awful murder. What did you see? The steam was too thick to see anything. But ask Garrow. He saw the body first. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Look, I'm not a suspicious fellow, but I think that he had professional interests elsewhere that he did not wish us to know about. Why should you think that? Where? I have no idea. But after all, it was not my business. How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. Uh... Sir Gregory, could you please explain this letter? You expressed the wish to call off the research work at the baths. It was all about Blinkhorn. He was merrily digging away and taking very little care about it, ruining everything and finding nothing of any value. But the arrival of Sir Rodney changed your mind? Sir Rodney's work was extremely promising, and it was good for the Bard's publicity. So yes, I changed my mind. Are you aware that Mr. Garrow is under a form of medication? Garrow? No. But I never liked that parasite. Do you believe him to be capable of murder? Well, he did have blood on him. Does that make him a murderer? Some melted silver was found inside the steam room brazier. Do you know where it came from? Silver? No. Did you bring a bottle of champagne to the baths? Absolutely not. Sir Rodney did, I think. Hmm. That would make sense if he wanted to celebrate whatever he found. Alrighty! Well, with those interrogations done, I think we will end this episode here. This has been interesting. We have a new murder to solve. We have some people who were in the room, so we'll see how this goes. With that being said, thank you everybody for joining me. If you like this, leave a like on the video, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.